It's almost that time of year when announcements for next season's motorcycles start to come thick and fast. We've already looked at seven Ducati rumors and eight Triumphs, and there are links to those videos in the description if you haven't seen them already. But what about the other manufacturers? In this video, we're going to run through the best of the rest. BMW have been pretty public about the development of a huge 1.8 litre pushrod boxer twin, commissioning a number of custom shops to build bikes up around the prototype motor, which they've gone on to publicise at major events like the Concorso de la Ganza this year. But we haven't had anything set in stone in terms of a production model until last week Italian motorcycle news website Moto Ciclismo revealed that BMW France are taking what they're calling a pre-book in which potential buyers can put down a thousand euros towards an R18 if they do eventually make it into dealers. The deposit's refundable should the R18 not materialise, but this is the strongest indication yet that something could be on the horizon, so I'll definitely be checking out the BMW stand at this year's EICMA show. Here's hoping, if a full production model is revealed, that it retains some of the styling of the most recent prototype, which looks absolutely stunning. Another brand new bike, expected to be unveiled in Milan in November, is the F850 RS, which is a road and touring orientated take on the F850 GS. A smaller capacity S1000XR, if you will, which has been a huge success for BMW in the sports adventure category. First came the warmly received 9 Cento concept bike, then some leaked spy shots, and then some patents leaked from Brazil, which almost certainly confirmed that the RS is imminent. The F850 GS produces 95 horsepower, so the RS ought to be similar, if not slightly more if the engine is tuned for top-end rush on the road. The chassis will presumably be similar too, but expect changes to the geometry in order to make it more nimble on the tarmac. The patents also show upside-down forks and radial brakes, perhaps the Brembos that can be found on the current R1250 RS. We just briefly mentioned the S1000XR, and that's a bike that's expected to get a major overhaul ahead of next year. It wasn't present in BMW's list of unchanged bikes for 2020, nor their list of colour updates, so the only logical conclusion is that a new and improved model will be unveiled at EICMA. The sportier S1000RR with which it shares a platform was updated for 2019 to accommodate BMW's shift cam variable valve timing system, so we could see this trickle down to the XR. Shift cam uses two cam profiles which are selected with an electronically actuated pin, with the less aggressive cam profile used to improve efficiency and fuel economy at lower revs, whilst the more aggressive cam gives better response and more power when the bike is under acceleration. This means that BMW can still boast competitive peak power specs whilst meeting the upcoming Euro 5 emissions rules. Apparently the updated motor in the S1000RR has different mounting points, so a redesigned frame will be necessary for the XR to accommodate it. Some styling updates could also be in order to bring it up to date alongside the F850 RS that we just looked at. Personally, I'm most excited to see if anything comes of the R18. It just looks crazy with those two 900cc cylinders sticking out of either side. But given that the S1000XR is BMW's best-selling four-cylinder bike, a major update alongside the introduction of a middleweight version in the F850 will surely be a sales success for BMW in 2020. Moving from Germany to their Austrian neighbours, KTM appear to have a few new bikes in the works too. We'll start with their biggest, the 1290 Super Adventure, which has been spotted out in testing with a bunch of revisions that appear to make it a more capable, long-distance tourer. A larger fairing provides better wind protection, whilst fuel tanks have moved to the bottom of the fairing in the style of the 790 Adventure, which helps with capacity as well as keeping the centre of gravity low. The larger fairing also accommodates a two-piece radiator to aid cooling, whilst changes to the tune of the motor are expected with a slight bump in power. There are also visible changes to the frame, subframe and swing arm. But perhaps the most keenly anticipated update will be the inclusion of radar sensors in order to enable adaptive cruise control. Many of us will be familiar with using it on cars, and it definitely takes the sting out of long motorway drives so I can see how it might be of value on a big tourer like the 1290. Ducati are also expected to announce similar tech on their updated Multistrada 1260 GT, so it's something we could be seeing more of in the next year or two. 
Another off-road bias model that's been spotted testing on a regular basis this year is the 390 Adventure. Expected to launch in November, it'll be an adventure take on the 390 Duke which uses a 370cc single-cylinder motor to put out a decent 44 horsepower. The 390 Adventure might come with a different tune and gearing to make it more usable off-road, as well as obvious necessities like longer travel suspension. A version with cast wheels of 19 inches at the front and 17 at the rear has been cited, as well as a bike with spoke 21 and 18 inch wheels, so perhaps the latter is an R model with even more adaptations to give it real off-road abilities, as is already the case with the 790 Adventure R. There's been a lot of hype about this bike in India where smaller capacity models tend to sell well and the fact that it'll be made by KTM's Indian partner Bajaj might also be a contributing factor to the buzz. Last up for KTM, there have been plenty of sightings of an updated version of the mid-capacity parallel twin used in their popular 790 Duke as well as the adventure we've just mentioned. Many blogs are calling it the 890, with an 890 Duke rumoured for Eichmer, and they're not the only company increasing the capacity of some of their most popular bikes. Euro 5 emissions rules come into place next year, so manufacturers are having to find ways to meet them. It seems as though more displacement is one way to do it whilst maintaining or even slightly increasing power figures. Out of the KTM rumours, the 1290 Super Adventure is my pick just because I love new tech and the adaptive cruise control is something I'd be keen to try out, even if I'd rarely use it myself on my daily central London commute where filtering is the only way to get anywhere quick. Moving on to the Japanese Big Four, Honda have a couple of bikes that are already confirmed for 2020. They've been teasing a new Africa Twin for a couple of months and it finally launched this week. There's a link to my video about it and the accompanying adventure sports model in the description below. The CBR 1000 RR Fireblade is also expected to get some big updates for next year, with a patent for movable aero winglets hitting the headlines. Aero winglets can be seen on MotoGP bikes as well as Ducati's top of the line Panigale V4R and are meant to provide downforce which can help to keep the front end down when exiting corners or provide stability in faster bends. The winglets on the new Fireblade will apparently be movable so perhaps deployed when most needed or when the bike is set to a more aggressive riding mode. But although this tech appears to be at the bleeding edge, the mechanics behind it are actually quite basic. The patent details a winglet that's pushed out by a spring and then retracted by a small servo that winds up a cable. I'm sure that other performance and emissions changes are in store for 2020, but even despite the fact that the winglets are less effective at road speeds and therefore of little use to most of us, I'm sure they'll continue to be the main talking point. Honda are also expected to add to their sports bike range at the lower end of the displacement spectrum with a new CBR300RR on the cards before the end of the year. Their CB300R Naked could provide the basis and that bike puts out 31 brake horsepower so it'll need a bit of tuning up to be competitive with other A2 license friendly sports bikes like the Yamaha R3 and Kawasaki Ninja 400 which are both capable of more than 40 horses. They're also expected to expand on their range of adventure scooters currently comprising of the XADV 750 and the Indonesia-only XADV 150. An adventure scooter is a weird concept to me, but it obviously works with the 750 being the seventh best-selling motorcycle in Europe in 2018, according to Visor Down. The rumoured XADV 300 is expected to use Honda's 279cc single-cylinder liquid-cooled four-valve motor, which should be good for about 25 horsepower. It'll be much more of a city bike than the 750, but it's expected to retain many of the tough styling cues of its bigger sibling. Out of the Hondas, the Fireblade is the one that I'm most looking forward to because of the winglets, obviously. Only a week or two ago, Kawasaki published a teaser video alluding to a new supercharged Z model motorcycle. Details are sparse and the video is deliberately vague, but I think we can make a few assumptions here. It'd be economically inefficient to develop a new supercharged motor for a naked bike when they already have an extremely powerful supercharged four-cylinder 998cc engine from the H2 line of sport and sports touring bikes. So this leads me to believe that we'll be getting a new Z1000, especially considering that it's five years since that line of bikes had a major update. The base H2 puts out a whopping 228 horsepower, so Kawasaki might be on the brink of launching the most powerful naked motorcycle on the market. Not only that, 
but they might be about to launch the most powerful 250cc production bike too. A prototype ZX25R has reportedly been spotted testing near Kawasaki's plant in Indonesia, with a racing exhaust that apparently makes the 250cc inline 4 sound like one of Kawasaki's bigger bikes. It would certainly be something different in a small capacity sports bike market that is dominated by parallel twins, with Kawasaki's own Ninja 250 currently the most powerful at about 39 horsepower. Visordown reports that the new ZX25R will come in two variants, one with 46 horses and a premium version with about 60. For such a slender bike, 60 horsepower is quite something and the motor must rev pretty high to achieve that power with such a small capacity. Kawasaki could have plenty of other bikes on the way too, their website currently shows a countdown with three dates and a whole bunch of bikes under covers, six I believe. There were also a couple of ATVs and a jet ski, so it looks like there could be much more to come. You may have noticed a bit of a trend for retro motorcycles at the moment. This year Suzuki got in on the game by turning their thoroughly modern GSX S1000 into the 2019 Katana, which has distinctive fairings inspired by the distinctive fairings of the original. And rumour has it that they're at it again, this time with the V-Strom 1000, which is perceived to be a decent bike, but not necessarily the first thing you think of in the adventure segment. So could it be given a shot in the arm by bringing it back as one of Suzuki's fondly remembered names, the DR Big? The 1990 version was the biggest single cylinder bike in production with a huge 779 cc's, but it seems way more likely that the big V-Strom's 1000 cc V-Twin will be repurposed, especially as it was suspiciously absent from Suzuki's 2020 lineup which was posted on their US website a few weeks ago. So expect similar specs of 101 horsepower and 74 foot-pounds of torque from the V-Strom, but wrapped up in a brightly coloured retro package. I've been digging pretty deep on this stuff and to be honest I couldn't find much of interest from Yamaha. They've already announced their R1 for 2020 and the only other bike I could find any hint of a rumour for is a baby version of the XSR. An XSR 155 has been launched in some Asian markets already so it seems logical that a 125 version might appear in the UK as a stylish learner legal option. At last year's Ikema show, Aprilia unexpectedly revealed the stunning RS660 concept, which was the first sign that they might be about to get involved in the supersport market. Patterns have now surfaced this year which suggest it actually could become a reality. The RS660 is expected to use a 660cc parallel twin engine configuration being derived from the front two cylinders of the V4 motor of their iconic RS V4. The patents list Sachs suspension which is a bit of a downgrade from the Olins on the concept bike, but aesthetically it looks pretty similar which is a good thing indeed. The Ninja 650 would be its only natural competitor so it could do well. Let's hope we see more of the production version at this year's show. Moto Guzzi's V85 motor is a bit of a peach. I absolutely loved it when I rode the V85 TT earlier this year. Their V7 and V9 bikes feel a bit underpowered to me but the 80 horsepower from the V85 means much more fun on tap, even on a big adventure bike like the TT. So it'd be a shame for it not to be deployed elsewhere in their range, which is why some are speculating that Moto Guzzi could revive the Grizzo. For those of you not familiar, the Grizo was or is a 1200 or 850cc V-twin roadster with a laid-back ride despite being pretty well spec with adjustable suspension and decent Brembo brakes. I say was or is because I thought it was discontinued, but a quick Google search showed that it still exists on the Moto Guzzi Canada website. Either way, I'd love to try a more road orientated chassis with the V85 TT's motor, so here's hoping there's some substance behind this rumour. Whew, that was a long video, I think I need a rest. I'm sure there are some that I've missed, Harley's new bare knuckle Street Fighter, Pan America Adventure Bike and 1250 Custom Cruiser all spring to mind, and I'm hoping to see something closer to production this autumn than the prototypes we've seen so far, but if you can think of anything else I've overlooked, let me know in the comments below. I'd also love to hear which rumours you're most into. Out of the whole lot, mine's still probably the BMW R18 that we mentioned at the top, but I'm sure it's not everyone's choice Choice, so drop me a comment to let me know and if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.